This is Tanaka, and in the opening moments of Sogoishi's 1978 film, Panic in High School, Tanaka will end his own life. Distressed from the growing academic pressure, Tanaka chooses death over facing his own failing grades. Not long after this moment, another student will gun down his own teacher, blaming him for the death of Tanaka. In the first 20 minutes of Panic in High School, we witness the death of both a pupil and a teacher. Ishii wastes no time in portraying the frustration that many you've suffered at that time, and ultimately establishes a clear point of view for the preceding narrative. Compare this to Takashi Miike's 2012 film, Lessons of Evil, where a school teacher massacres school children in the film's dark comedic climax. Whilst Miike's film is far less concerned with the issues surrounding the educational system than Ishii's politically driven text, the two still stand to show that despite being released over 30 years apart, Japan's school system has an underlying dangerous and explosive tension. These films, and many more, explore the theme that freedom and authority will inevitably clash. Hi, my name's Rob and welcome to my channel where we explore the wonders of East Asian cinema today, Anarchy in the Classroom. Sogawishi's film was not born in a vacuum, it was born during a period of generational divide. Japan was changing and the youth were experiencing an influx of change and growing pressures to succeed in the growing capitalist market. This idea of anarchy in the classroom that Ishii explores is a result of that change. It reflects the frustration, anger, and anxiety that Japan's youth had at the time. The classroom would continue to be a place of violence for Japanese cinema, and delinquent youth films would continue to dominate the screen in various forms. The classroom seems to represent the friction that exists between the youth of Japan and the older generation. The teacher represents authority, and the youth represents the freedom of being unattached to the institutionalized system of Japan. Films like Panic in High School and Lessons of Evil play with this friction, and Japan appears to perpetually play with narratives that depict anarchy in the classroom. The image of a boarded school child seems normal, and the stories of violence in the classroom seem consistent. But why? Violence in the classroom and schoolyard anarchy gets presented in various forms in Japanese media. Ishii created a stark and prominent image when he started his film with a student jumping from the top of a building. But decades later that image would still be explored, and arguably taken to its ultimate cinematic extremity in Suicide Club. Watching a large group of school children throw themselves in front of a train as part of a radical death cult seems to take Ishii's image to a new place. Whilst extreme, it highlights the fact that there is an unresolved issue that still exists. Ishii's opening is hard-hitting and leaves a heavy emotional weight on the audience. Sion Sono's opening is sensationalist with layers of dark humour, yet ultimately shocking. Yet this clearly details a story of failure, a failure to address an issue, and as a result, shocking moments like the opening of Suicide Club now exist. In Toyoda's film, Blue Spring, this image of suicide becomes a game. Students see who can clap the most without falling from the top of a building to see who is the alpha of the school. It's a proving ground. Now the idea of jumping from the top of a building is a mere game, a typical game played by children to see who is the best, a clear reflection of the competitiveness of academia. In this school, the friction between teacher and student is non-existent, because the teachers barely exist. Here the school is a place of violence, where those that can fight and survive are the ones that gain the most respect. In Miike's Crow Zero, this is taken to the extreme. In this school, it really is about fighting. Whoever wins is the top of the school. Miike creates a world close to the manga style that influenced it, one where the fighting feels like the students have super strength and power. It feeds into a young male fantasy where the schoolyard's realistic competitive nature gets reimagined as a place where violence is celebrated over any academic achievement. 
This fantasy is achieved by the absence of any strong authoritative figure. The children are left alone to create their own hierarchy. Whilst violence is now the competition of choice, the school setting can never be imagined without a winner and a loser. In Battle Royale, this idea of children fighting against each other as a reflection of the natural competitiveness of school is presented in an opposite light. Here there is too much authority, all freedom is gone and the students are placed into a nightmarish game of survival. Only one class member will be alive at the end of this game. An extreme vision, but in a world where students fight over university places, learn to compete in a harsh job climate, this extreme image begins to feel like a simple metaphor. In Ishii's film, a student kills themselves because they didn't get the grades they needed. The pressure of their teacher made them feel like they had failed at everything. What do they do if they don't have the grades they need? This image and issue has evolved into films about students killing each other to become the top of their class. Teachers pitting students against each other in games to the death. And while the narratives have become more extreme, the issue remains. From Battlefield Baseball that imagines a comical world of violent baseball games, to Fudo the Next Generation's image of Yakuza children, the image of violence in the classroom seems prominent. Ishii's more emotional and hard-driven depiction has become so normalised that it can be extreme and comical now. These films clearly paint an image of anger and frustration that exists in the school system. One where violence offers a cathartic image and also a nightmare mirror image of what academic competitiveness feels like. The reality is that Japan has often had problems with how demanding their academic system is and their work life. And the fact that these narratives seem so normal implies that they feed into some audience desire. Be it as a cathartic release or as a way to tap into a shared fear, these films feed in to a societal feeling. Films can only reach parody levels of obscenity if there first exists a consistent reoccurring theme. To get lessons of evil, we have to have panic in high school. Furthermore, the fact that we still see films that explore themes surrounding violence in the classroom, then we must address that this issue still exists. For example, the cyberpunk genre, which has been addressed on this channel a lot, died out because it was a reactionary genre that aimed to portray the fear and anxiety towards a tech wide future. Now we are in that future, that genre has become obsolete, at least in that form. The fact that films and texts are still being made that portray violence and anarchy in the classroom, decades after Ishii's film, means that society still has ongoing issues and ideas surrounding these genre concerns. This is not to imply that Japan's school system is bad, every country has issues, but I think these films clearly act as a reactionary text towards the pressures that is often associated with the Japanese school system. If a film like Lessons of Evil was made in America, it would carry vastly different connotations with its depictions of guns and violence in a classroom. Hence, we must view these films from a national, contextual lens. And therefore, we see a queer story of competitiveness, frustration, anger, and fear. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it around, like, comment, subscribe, do all the amazing things that you always do, and I will see you guys next time.